So Barry, the first question from JDCFC, we'll use his uh, username just on the forum. Stephen Kenny seems like a wild bird man. Is he? And what's the funniest thing he's ever done or said? <laughs> Aye, he's definitely a bird man. Um, funniest thing he's done. No, nah, there's too many to mention. Like, I mean, just he does a couple of stupid things, you know, when training that. Like, when he's on a high, like, you know, stupid things are coming in and jumping off for a header wee and pushing you off a ball and stuff like that. Like, but there are a few other dodgy ones I can't really mention, like, but he's Good. definitely a bird man. Like, it's not as if we're going to put it on the bike screen. Like that. <laughs> he can't mention it. Like. Well, I heard a rumour that uh, apparently he came on the train on one day with the two same shoes but two different colours, one brown, one black. <laughs> so, that gives you a kind of. Kind of the mentality has like, but uh, the fun, the maddest thing he's ever said. Um, same again. <laughs> There's plenty of them like, but um, uh, I think he was trying to motivate big Shane McIlhenny last year, like you know, trying to get him angry and that before the match. And Shane's a big fan of fishing, like so he was saying to him, you know, just pretend someone had nicked their fishing rod or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> Who would be the two to compete in the day squad for skill school? In soccer AM, and who would win? Uh, Paddy McElhenney and Danny Lafferty. Uh, I'd say Danny Lafferty would probably take him, to be honest. Paddy's got good skills and all, but Danny's, Danny's got a few tricks up his sleeve. Like. Here's a question from old Danny Boy. What's your favourite moment from your footballing career, and why? Probably won in the FA Cup in 2006. Uh, beating Gothenburg. In the same season, like I uh, get bitten Gothenburg home and away was was a big achievement for me. Like, and I, I, I probably the two best moments in my career so far. Marty asks, "What was your?" He's got two questions, so we'll go to the first one first. Uh, what was your opinion of John Robertson? Um, well, obviously things didn't go too well here under John. You know what I mean? But uh, personally, I got on really well with him. Um, he made me captain a couple of occasions, like so. I couldn't really say anything bad about him, like you know. But uh, obviously things didn't go too well under his regime, like so. It's probably enough said on that matter. Like. He also asks, apart from the obvious young talent like uh, James McLean and Patrick McElhenney, name one player you think City fans should be keeping an eye out for. Um, well, there's a couple, like obviously the likes of Roy Harkin and that too. But I think uh, the one for me at the minute that I'm looking forward to seeing him in the next few years is probably Ryan McBride. I like think he's a, he's just a natural defender. Like you know, he's he's not one to come out of the back with a ball and stuff like that. But he's just a, he just wants to defend. He, he just loves heading the ball and tackling. Like and I think he's he could have a massive future at the club. Like well, he certainly made a big impression a couple of weeks ago when he got his chance. Like at the brand new, well, he doesn't he doesn't mess up out. Like and there was no. a lot of people were very impressed with him. Well, that's it. He's, he's sort of similar mould to Darren Kelly. You know, he just he loves heading the ball. Like he's just a proper out and out defender. Like which which is brilliant. It's just like a similar to Big Sturdy as well. Like you know and. Big Sturdy's been excellent for us, like so many of Frank, and keep improving, he'll be a big player for us. Does Stephen Kenny tend to favour calm and quiet team talks, or is he fond of a hairdryer moment once in a while? He'd be more uh, calm, like, you know what I mean, trying to motivate people and stuff like that, and trying to use different sort of ideas and different players, you know what I mean, but obviously he can, he can raise the roof at times, like if things aren't going well, or if people aren't pulling their weight, you know what I mean, but he'd be more likely to be calm and collective rather than going and shouting at people like, but he can do both Is that one of his things but we've always seen it in the past where you know when say you're playing a cup match here and it goes to the extra time he tends to take the players over towards the singing fans are. is that like a, a thing he's come to sort of realise now that's going to happen in the future like? He's very smart obviously it's a brilliant uh, motivational thing like I think in, uh, in the cup final against Shells I think I was I was a Great shout from him, like you know, he brought us all over when we were down to nine men. They over to the, the sort of jungle side of it, and uh, the fans sort of buzzed off it, and the players got a, a big response off it as well. You know what I mean? And I think that helped, you know, that whole night getting through with nine men and going on to win the game. But he's very smart with stuff like that. You know, um, he sort of he feeds off the fans, and the fans feed off him. Like. Uh, D. Curran asked the question on the sausage roll bapped a bit. <laughs> Are you a red sauce or a brown sauce man when it comes to a sausage roll bap? Sausage roll bap, uh, definite brown sauce. Have you ever had a sausage roll bap? <laughs> I actually have once, eh? <laughs> once. It wouldn't be part of your sort of diet, like, for a shooting in it? Say no, I'm not saying no. <laughs> <laughs> There's another J, Big J. He asks the question, do you actually think James McLean wears sexy boots? And if you could, which player's boots would you like to swap for your own? <laughs> no, definitely not sexy. And 
it's one of the worst songs I've ever heard sung about a player to be honest like I'm, I hate it uh, whose boots would I like to take uh, could do a pretty big human big human's aids like. he's got a couple of goals in them like you know what I mean it's not something I'm used to like so probably big human's eh? Sean D asks the question are you a heart based man or the normal stuff heart based I like my beer cold like. and Mickey C asks Stephen Kenny or Raymond Curtin <laughs> Ah, uh, it's easy. Room and Curtin all day. He used to play me up front like when I was a main man, so Stephen would never let me go past the halfway line now, like so definitely Room and Curtin. Is that why you're not scoring as much? Because you're no, that's it, like, um, bag, like that's it, like I'm um, obviously I'm a goal machine really like, but I just don't get the opportunity to, to get in the box too much, you know what I mean? Barry Davy asks, Are you a custard cream or bourbon cream man? <laughs> custard cream. There's a couple of questions from uh Mighty McCourt. The first question he asks was How close were you to signing for Bristol Rovers? Well, to be honest, like if uh, if there had been an offer there, I probably would have signed. Um, obviously, going on the back of what everything would happen with a club and that. But um, I went over and had a play a match in that and training him for a couple of weeks and did quite well. But uh, it just wasn't the player they were looking for. Like so, uh, the opportunity never arose. They they signed for them. Like you know. Uh, as Paddy, I think this is Paddy McCourt, the best player you've ever played with, and if not, who is or who was? Ah uh, well, definitely the best player I played with since I've been back in Ireland. Like no, um, at there he was on, he was a man slick. So I, he would be probably the best player I played with here. Like, who is your most hated opponent? There's been a few over the years, like um, a few obvious ones. I think there was a boy called Al Murphy. Used to play for Longford. <coughs> when I played for Drogheda, he was a Drogheda man as well, and I think he was more hated by the Drogheda people than <laughs> anyone else. Like, but. Couldn't stand him, he was a bit of a narc on the pitch and that, and then obviously there's a couple of Shells players like I never got home with, um, Owen Heary, Stuart Byrne, could never take the name boys, like you know, you have your battles with people on the pitch, you know what I mean, and you shake their hand afterwards, they're a bit of respect, but I think uh, I would, there's no love lost between them two boys, and I wouldn't mind giving them a good kick every now and then. Like. What about my mother, Jason McGuinness? Jason McGuinness, actually, on the pitch he's a bit of a... Hard man, I don't know. He gives off this impression that he's he's a bad one, like, but he's actually he's actually a nice fellow off it. Which I've I was told in a, a couple of years ago that he was a nice fellow, and he actually is. I've chatted him a couple of times, and he's he's not not the worst now, to be honest. I just think he's an awful player, and he just gets in the way. Like it's well, that's my opinion. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the toughest opponent you've ever played against? Um, probably Kevin Hunter or Joseph and Dolik. I think they were the two top midfielders I've played against, and and this league anyway, like the two of them are. Playing at the, the top teams at the time, and Joseph's obviously still playing. Like, but uh, very tough opponents at two of them, different kind of players. But I'd say they're probably the best and the, the toughest opponents. Was Ola Tudman as bad as he looked? <laughs> <laughs> Your smile speaks volumes. Right? Um, when he first signed, like he, he came on, done a couple of training sessions, and he, we thought this boy looks looks the business, like you know what I mean. But uh, there was a couple of rumours going around that he was voted. In the worst eleven at Sheffield Wednesday, like so, we thought something's not right here, like. But obviously, he only played one match for the club, and he didn't do too too well, like. So I don't think I really need to comment on that. Forget that, man. <laughs> well, exactly. Who's the biggest nut job in the Derry dressing room ever? I think it's an obvious one, Hargy, Sean Hargan, like okay. the biggest Wayne I've ever met in my life, like for someone who's so old, like and bald. You know, he's a the biggest character I've ever met, and he's. Non stop all the time, like so. And I have to say, Hargy, but the biggest nut job ever. Like, Hargy still thinks that he should be playing, like, you know. Well, that's exactly. Yeah. You, know, you know what I mean? Done, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that shows it is a nut job, you yeah, know what I mean? Because he's useless. <laughs> 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 Who's the current nut job? Current nut job on our team? Jeez. Uh, it's a tough one. Ha! <laughs> Tommy McBride, easy. <laughs> he is simple and he has a nut job as well. Like so. <laughs> Brenda asks, whenever the younger players started doing the wow celebration last year, did you look around the dressing room and think, Jesus, what a pile of gimps? Ah, definitely. It's a shocking celebration. Like, and I was just looking around going, whatever happened to the, the boys in my era? The decent celebrations were we just going mad. Like, but It worked for them young boys, but then again, they're all weirdos, aren't they? Like, so... Fair play to them. That's it. Paddy the Harps hitter. He says, what do you think of... The, oh, well, I can't repeat that online, Paddy. This is actually a final question too, but... Um, sorry, Stuart Byrne. 
And do you also think he's rubbish on MNS? When will they ever get someone from Derry on the show? This is before us, Sir Berna. No respect for him at all. It's after his rant, you know what I mean? He's, he was a good player in that, you know. But after his rant, when they won the league, I thought they showed a, a lack of sort of class like him. There was no need to sort of come out and have an outburst, outburst like that on live TV. I thought it was very disrespectful to Stephen and the, the, the team as well, like, you know what I mean? So don't like the man at all, like, you know. Um, I haven't actually seen him on m to be honest. Uh, probably the same. I've probably just turned away when he's talking because he's a bit of an idiot, like, but... Um, Derry man, well, there's plenty of boys out there who could, who could, you know, I'm sure have a good opinion on the, on the, on the panel, like you know what I mean. But we're used to Derry not getting, getting much decisions and stuff like that, and getting favoured for stuff like that. So we'll see. You never know. We could, you could make an appearance this, this year, next year. You know, hopefully. What about Jerry Mucker Hargy? Like he does Hargy? commentary with me. I don't know if you've ever listened to us doing the commentary. But well, I have, I have actually because I've been out injured now for the last seven weeks or a show, like unfortunately, but. Hargy's not the worst. I think he puts on a bit of a dodgy accent, doesn't he? And he comes off as if he's posh or something like that. But no, you know, boys like that should be given the opportunity. The likes of Hargy and Eamon Doherty, Gary Beckett, you know, they're very experienced players and they obviously know what they're talking about, you know. So I don't see why they haven't been given a shout to go down and give their opinion. And it'd be good to see someone from outside of Dublin, Cork or whatever, like getting, getting their opportunity to have a go. OK, Billy. Or Billy. Billy. I'll try Barry this time. Uh, Barry, thanks very much for joining us and uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Come on, thank you. All right, cheers.